Let me explain what I mean by stay. We've not planted our feet in a way that, or in churches that will help us grow. It is interesting, but I believe the Lord... The, the Lord himself is doing what he's doing now. He's moving you around so you can be what he wants you to be. Sometimes God will send people into your life that will just mess your life up. Oh God, some people like that. You know. What do you see in these pictures? That guy there is... He's having dinner somewhere. Han spiser middagsen. But on the table, he's making a phone call to the waiter. Men på vägen bor det så ingen annan till känner honom. What does he say? Vad säger det? Laziness. Yeah, he's not patient. Han är inte tålmodig. I mean, the waiter is definitely in that room somewhere, but he's calling the guy on the phone, the cell phone, right Kjell, there in the same room. How about the lady? She's what? She's not? Do you know anybody like that? <laughs> is it clear or should we turn down some lights? You can you see where it's okay? Can you see? Amen. So we will uh, we will look at patience and you see that long suffering. See how long it is long. We discuss now come to move ahead or long move ahead. Hallelujah. Long tour. Yeah. So our scripture we've been looking at has been Galatians five twenty two to twenty three. We discuss there for Galatians five twenty two to twenty three. That's where we've been looking at. There we are. It says, "For the fruit of the spirit." which is the result of God's presence, or Holy Spirit's presence in us, is love, and love is unselfish concern for others. How about this guy? <laughs> Have you been there before? Patience. Now, the first man we see here, he's waiting patiently. And I'm going to... Uh, he's waiting patiently. I hope you can see what is written there. And the second, this man is frustrated and is showing very much patience. 
Den første mannen venter tålmodig, mens den andre er... Is showing. Is showing much patience. Den andre mannen er frustrert og viser ikke mye tålmodighet. Vise tålmodighet. I know, I'm saying what I say. Ok, han viser veldig mye tålmodighet. Ja. Because this is how many of us show our patience. Fordi det er sånn mange av oss viser vår tålmodighet. I'm waiting God away! Jeg venter Gud. Når! Nei! Når? Når? When? Anybody like, anybody spray like that before? Er det noen som har bedt sånn før? Maybe not, maybe not the way he looks. Kanskje ikke sånn han ser ut, men... Ikke så ekstremt. Not so extreme. Ok, maybe this is not extreme, this is nice looking. Kanskje dette ikke er ekstremt, dette ser bra ut. What does the face say? Men hva er det ansiktet han sier? How about these wonderful people? Hva med disse fantastiske menneskene? Ok, these nice people. Disse flotte menneskene. At least, at least this lady there is like, what are you people doing? Get off the line, you know, hurry up. Hun sier, hva er det driv med? Skynd dere. But the fruit of the Spirit is really just the ability to have Christ-like reactions. Men åndens frukt er egentlig bare en mulighet til å ha reaksjoner lik Kristus. Christ-like reactions. Reaksjoner lik Kristus. You know WWJD? What would Jesus do? Dere vet den WWJD? Hva ville Jesus gjort? Christ-like reactions. Christ-like reaksjoner. To situation. So, in essence, love is the Christ-like reaction to disagreeable people. Så kjærlighet er Kristus-like reaksjon til ubehagelige mennesker. People that That's unlovable. Mennesker som det er vanskelig å huske. Some can even be in the family. Noen kan til og med være i familien. Sometimes most of them are in the family. Fleste parten av gangene så er de i familien. And then there's always this person in your workplace that is just sent from Alleluia. Og så er det alltid den personen på jobben som er sent fra. He's sent to help your fruit of the spirit grow. Han er sent for å hjelpe åndens frukt. And joy is a Christ-like reaction to depressing circumstances. Og glede er en kristuslik reaksjon til deprimerende omstendigheter. Because if you don't have joy, there are so many situations today that is going on that if you don't have joy, you'll be depressed. Fordi hvis du ikke har glede, så er det så mange situasjoner i dag. And so peace is a Christ-like reaction to distressing anxieties. Glede, så blir du deprimert. Fred er en kristuslik reaksjon til plagsomme bekymringer. Anxieties. Bekymringer. Matthew 6.33 says what? Matthew 6.33 sier hva? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Søk først Guds rike og hans rettferdighet, så vil alle de andre tingene komme til deg. But if you read from 25, it talks about all the things that we run after. Men hvis du leser fra vers 25, så leser du om alle tingene vi løper etter. Anxieties. Bekymringer. You want to look good. Du vil se bra ut. You want to have a good life. Du vil ha et bra liv. You want to have everything good. Du vil ha alt bra. And there is nothing wrong with that. Og det er ikke noe galt med det. The problem is when it takes over your mind. Takes over your mind. Problemet er når det tar over sinnet ditt. And it does. Og det gjør det. Have you seen people who are driven? Har dere? People who are driven by things they want to have. Sett folk som blir... Går etter det de ønsker. Ikke bare gå. They are driven. They seem... Drives of... They can't control it. They have no need for a new eyeglasses until they saw a friend bought a very nice one. They had no need for a boat until they saw their neighbor bought one home. Før de så naboen, tok med en hjem. 
and then the husband will not sleep. You know, honey, you know, it would be nice to have a boat. <laughs> in the morning and in the evening, you know, you know, we can actually take our neighbors with us on the boat. So, you are driven because of what you saw. That's if you don't have peace, things like that can take you over. And God help you if you live in a neighborhood where everybody has. Maybe during Christmas time, everybody on your street have had big, big Christmas lights and big trees, and only your house is no light. And your children come back to, with you from school and they're looking at, Papa, see that house, see that house, see that house. And what do you say? They sure look good, they look good. Oh. And you are driving there thinking, oh God, we can't afford it this year. <laughs> Driven by things, not because you need them, but of course Christmas lights, yeah, you, whatever, but you get what I'm saying. And patience is the Christ-like reaction to difficult situations. Which is what we are handling today. Christ-like reaction to difficult situations. Anybody ever had a difficult situation? Prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and then prayed more. After then you had to pray more. And then you prayed more. And then you prayed more. And you seem not to see what you are praying about. You need patience. Amen. So what is patience? In the King James, Sometimes it's translated in some of the Bible translations. Patience is sometimes translated as long suffering. King James version, so I told more that no longer or shot me long more that. So, patience is the noble ability of bearing with either difficult people or adverse adverse circumstances without breaking down. To more that there are the only mulet that will bear vanskelige personer eller situationer uten å bli knekt av det. Think about it. Difficult situation. Or some difficult people. Without saying, okay, they are not. It's enough. Oops, 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 oops. Out, out, out. <laughs> it's patience that help you carry through such situations. Patience is the character characteristic of tolerance for the intolerable. Have you met some intolerable people? <laughs> so you need patience for people like that. It is patience that allows you to tolerate such people. Patience is the generous willingness. I use that word on purpose. Generous willingness. To understand the awkward people or disturbing events that God allows to enter our lives. You have a choice to say no. You have a choice to go away. But you have Generous, you are generous with your willingness. Men du er generøs med villigheten din. Maybe they will change tomorrow. Kanskje de vil forandre seg i morgen. It will be better tomorrow. Kanskje det blir bedre i morgen. It will be better tomorrow. Det blir bedre i morgen. It's patience you need to keep doing that. Det er tålmodighet du trenger for å fortsette å gjøre det. Then patience is that powerful attribute that makes you remain steadfast, under strain. Tålmodighet er den kraftfulle egenskapen av å stå støtt under press. Amen. Amen. Step us on the strain. The Bible says we are Christians, Christians are like soldiers. Hey, come here. Welcome. When did you enter? You've been around since today? Welcome. Welcome, I just saw you now. Hallelujah. Where's your wife and baby? 
Amen. So, but this patience has two Greek, uh, there are two Greek words that, that uh, this patience is derived from. So don't, don't get tired. Uh, it's hupomoni and, uh, yeah, hupomoni and the other one. Hupomoni is Greek, it means under, abide. And this word expresses the idea of being under a burden for a long time without breaking down for it. You are not changing because of it. You don't say, I forgive you, but I will never forget. It is difficult to live, but that's why only Christ can make this happen in you. And the second one is macro tumors. Macro tumors. And this expresses the idea of anger taking a long time before you let it out. And even if you explode, it is controlled. I don't know if you understand. The ability to not get angry quickly. And even if you get angry and you need to show your anger, you don't just explode like a magnum bomb. You, 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 yeah. Some people, for example, if something happens to you at work as a, as a man or a woman, you are angry from your work, you are angry already because of what happened, and you came home, you pour it on everybody. And the first person that gets it is the dog or the cat. It's coming, and then get out of the way. And then your children come, oh, Papa, is, and I can't, I can't, but then I can't. And then your children come, Papa, no, not now. You vent on everybody, uncontrolled. So, this aspect of the fruit of the Spirit called patience is what? <laughs> The ability is the ability, it's a supernatural ability to keep you from frustration. That you don't get angry at God or people. Then the form for ons frukt calls langmodighet, or they are an overnaturally event law on terra leads of frustration ut no book under for sinner at the mot good element on andra. You need God for this. You train a good for that. Amen. Amen. So, you see, we cannot talk about this and not talk about anger. You notice that everything we're talking about anger is coming in, you know, angry, angry, angry. So let's look at what anger really is. Because when you are impatient, what happens is that it arouses some feelings and that feeling is in some sense called anger. Somebody is taking a step on, on, your, on your toes when you are impatient. What do you do? The reaction is anger. What have I done? Why are you angry at me? So how do we handle anger then? Number one. Realize the cost of uncontrolled anger. It is expensive. When you are angry, you can tell people, I hate you forever, I wish you were this, I wish you were that. And it's just anger. At the end of the day, you don't mean what you said. So anger will make you do things you didn't plan to do. Anger makes people commit suicide. Anger makes people go and jump in front of the rail or something. Because they're angry or something. And it's too late. Very expensive. So 
Anger is simply a strong emotion of displeasure arising from a feeling of injury. Sinne är rätt och slett en stark känsla av missnöje som följd av en känsla av skada. So anger itself is not a sin. Let's get that correct. Så so, sinne i sig själv är inte en synd. Amen. Amen. Anger is not a sin. Sinne är inte en synd. It's when it's not controlled that is the sin. Det är när du inte kan kontrollera den att det är en sin. The Bible says in Ephesians 4:26. Bibeln säger i Efeserna 4. Be angry. Blir det inte? Why would God ask us to be angry? Varför skulle Gud be oss om att vara sinta? Be angry at the works of the devil. Bli sinte på djävulens sanning. Anger is a strong emotion that will help you go against some things in the darkness and in the kingdom of darkness. Sinne är en ting som vill få dig att hjälpa dig att gå emot något som du märker sig. If you're not angry enough about your lifestyle, you will not change it. Om du inte är sint nog på hur du lever så vill du inte förändra det. You need anger to say, mm, I will never do this again. Du tränger sinne för att säga, nej, jag vill inte göra det igen. He says, be angry or do not sin. Bibeln säger var sint men syn inte. And don't even let the sun go down on your anger. Och låt inte solen gå ner över det du fredar. You can't control anger once adrenaline rush kicks in. Du kan inte kontrollera sinnen när adrenalin pumpar i dig. You must learn to control your anger before you get angry. Du måste kontrollera sinnen på förhand. Like before you leave the house in the morning, say, Lord, I forgive everybody that will offend me today. So, see, far for a drive to see that. So, till det är alla som kommer till oss. Help me not to get hurt. Hjälp mig att inte bli sårad. When that situation arises, the Holy Spirit has been given permission to help you. När det då den situationen kommer, så har den heliga ande fått tillåtelse att hjälpa dig. No, maybe I'm just kidding. Have you seen angry people before? They, when they are already angry. Har du sett sinte människor när de är allerede sinte? It's just this this tiny jelenke person like this. If she gets no, she is not her. But some people like small like this. When no, not small. When they get angry, five people cannot hold them. När de små människor blir verkligen sinte, så kan inte fem människor hålla dem nere. Because of adrenaline. På grund av adrenaline. Amen. So some dictionaries point out that in the old old English word for anger is also the same as to choke. Eh någon ordböcker säger i den engelske att det gamla engelska ordet för sinne eh faktiskt betyder att kvela. To choke, to strangle. Och kvela. Have you felt like choking some people sometimes? Har det först för att kvela någon människa någon gång? Have you had this feeling before like this? Oh! Have you been on planes before? It's coming from your nose. How about that? If I just can get your face in my hands. Unrestrained anger is sin. So they will keep on holding it back. Keep sin as it. They are sin. Once people say, "I am sorry, I am sorry," I say, "No, no, you've crossed." So when they say, "Unshul my, unshul my," and you say, "No," and you kept, you've crossed into sin. So are you got in the sin? God help you. Do you help me? Okay. Number two, reflect before reacting. Reflect before handle. Reflect. Think again before you react. Think over again before you handle. The Bible says in Proverbs 16:32, "He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that rules his spirit better than he that takes a city." The story of Urspråk 16:32, "En sindig man är bättre än en helt. Den som styrer sitt sin är bättre än den som intar en by." How about James 1:19 to 20? Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Wrath there is anger. For the wrath of man walketh not the righteousness of God. Anger, like serious anger, is wrath. Sorry. I Jakob 1, 19-20. Dette må dere vite, mine kjære brødre. En vær skal være snart til å høre, men sent til å tale og sent til å bli sint. 
for sin også et menneske førerik til den som har rett for Gud. Tell the neighbor, reflect, think again before you get angry, before you act. Si til naboen din, tenk over det før du handler. Think again. Tenk igjen. Proverbs 29:11 says. Ursprungne 29:11 sier. A stupid man gives rain, free rain to his anger, but the wise man waits and lets it cool or grow cool or cool down. En dårlig gir luft for alt sitt sinne, men en vis man holder det tilbake. But one thing I wanted to show us here is that anger is a second thing. It's in the second place. Something happened before you got angry. Det er alltid noe som skjer før du blir sint. Har vi diskutert som det, så du vekker opp i morgen og du er angre, og du vet ikke hvorfor jeg er angre. Har du oppdaget at du har våknet om morgenen en gang, og så er du sint? Ikke hvorfor jeg er sint. That's a smart person that is finding out why am I angry. Some people will just continue to be angry without finding out why. Det er en smart person som finner ut hvorfor de er sint. So anger is always the second emotion in any experience. Sinn er alltid den andre følelsen i en erfaring. Please think about these things. Tenk på dette. I know nobody here gets angry, so I, I am just saying this, just in case you get angry. Amen. Number three, release your anger appropriately. Take it easy. It's okay to be angry, but take it easy. Remember, the Bible says in Ephesians 4, 26. I like this one. It says, if you become angry, do not let your anger lead you into sin. Amen. Alright, so but then let's look at these four, four possible ways that will respond to anger. Det er fire mulige måter å reagere på når du er sint. Er du stille her? Ok, sinking. Er vi her? Det er fire ways som vi er enige om å finne og sjekke inn til livet og alt det. Fire mulige måter som vi reagerer på hva som er sint. Det er fire mulige måter som vi reagerer på hva som er sint. Det er fire hovedmåter å reagere på hva som er sint. Den første er å fortrenge det. Den første er å fortrenge det. You repress it. Du fortrenger det. You hold the resentment inside. Du holder sinne inne. Nobody sees it. Ingen ser det. You repress it. Du fortrenger det. The second one is you suppress it. Den andre er at du undertrykker det. This one you pretend it doesn't exist at all. Which means people can sense maybe you're angry but you say no, 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 everything is okay. Du later som det ikke finnes så folk kan merke at du har sint men du sier nei, alt er bra. Somebody made an appointment with you and you cooked for like 10 people. Du hadde en, noen hadde en avtale med deg og du lagde mat for 10 personer. And then, and it was supposed to come at 5, and then at 4.30, after everything is ready, they called and said, you know, oh, I forgot, we are not coming again. De skulle komme klokka 5, og halv 5 så ringer de når alt er klart, at det er nei, vi kunne ikke komme. And then he says, I hope you are not angry. Jeg håper du ikke er sint. We Norwegians, what do you say? Vi nordmenn, hva sier vi? It's okay, I'll tell you now. Ja, det er ok. Det er greit. Det går så bra. Og etter at du har lagt på, du er fuming på deg selv. Bare gå krasig. Så er du virkelig sint. Ja, det er at du suppresser det til personen, men på innsiden. Da undertrykker du det til personen, men på innsiden. En annen måte du gjør, er at du ekspresser det. En annen måte er å uttrykke det. Ah, Pastor Joseph, hva er det du snakker om? Du sier at jeg ikke skal holde det. Nå sier du at jeg ikke skal uttrykke det. Hva skal jeg gjøre, Pastor? Du kan gjøre det, men jeg sier at det må være kontrollert. Nå, se hvordan du uttrykker det. Når den personen ringer og sier at vi ikke kan komme igjen på 4.30. Når den personen ringer og sier at vi ikke kan komme igjen. You say, what do you, what do you take me for? You think because I'm a Christian that I have lost my mind? Tror du at fordi jeg er kristen så er jeg, så er jeg sinnssyk? You think I'm brainwashed? Tror du jeg er hjernvashed? What's wrong with you people? When I deal with non-Christians, they don't give me trouble. Only you Christians give me trouble. Hva er det for noe med dere kristne? Bare ikke kristne gir meg problemer. Motsatt? Motsatt. Motsatt. Express it, you explode. 
Du uttrycker det, du exploderar. The last one is to confess it. Den sista är att bekänna det. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. That's where I'm going to. When you confess to the Lord, he cleanses you of all the anger and the bitterness. I 1 Johannes 1, 9, Men där som vi bekänner våra synder är han trofast och rättfärdig. Så han tillgir oss syndene og renser oss for all en urett. Så efter du har lagt på den telefonen, når de har sagt at de ikke kan komme, og de har fortalt at de ikke kan komme, så ser du til Herre og sier, Lord, jeg føler at jeg choker disse menneskene nå. Så sier du til Herre, å Herre, jeg føler for å kvele disse menneskene. Ifall, Herre, jeg føler at 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 Because that's the only thing that can keep your mind, your mind in one place. Confess it to the Lord. You'll be amazed that in a short while, the, the fuse and the fuming will calm down. So if of all these four ways of expressing it, the first three, I recommend you not to do. So of these four, so I'm going to not do the three first. Do the last four, the fourth one. Gjør den fjerde. Bekjenn det. Konfess det. Bekjenn det. Amen. Amen.